love my pillow. I love my pillow. I love my pillow. Every night before going to bed, just thinking about, I love my pillow. You know, the amazing thing is, we have a love and a hate relationship with our pillow, don't we? How many times do you think, I hate this thing. I just hate this thing. It's horrible. Can't get comfortable. It doesn't fit me. I am not sure how in the world I'm supposed to get a good night's sleep with this thing. Well, listen. We're going to answer a bunch of questions tonight. In fact, you know, one of the things I want you to recognize is that this is something that each and every one of us has to do. We're going to use a pillow. It's not a question. It's not a choice. Guess what? We're going to use a pillow. I don't care whether you're a back sleeper, whether you're a side sleeper. Please don't tell me you're a stomach sleeper. We'll get to that in a second. But each and every one of us, this conversation is going to apply to. So listen, I want to hear from you. I want to hear what type of pillow do you have. And I also want to hear if you've been tested on it. Now, maybe that's a new concept for y'all. And we're going to talk about that here in this workshop, of how you're going to test yourself on your pillow. Because let me tell you, picking the right pillow is not an easy thing. Over 30 years in practice, I can't tell you how many times patients have walked through my front door, pillow in hand, to find out this thing that they've been using, this thing that they've been relying on, is not supporting their body the way it's supposed to. In fact, it's been making their system weaker and not stronger every single day. Now, we talk about this all the time from the standpoint that getting a good night's sleep isn't easy. And here's the problem. Most of us haven't done the research, we haven't done the understanding, we haven't gone through the testing to make sure that we're setting ourselves up for success. Now, the amazing thing is, is some people don't care. Others, they just simply don't know. And that's why I'm gonna ask you to share this information Hit the like button, stop now, hit the like button, share this information, you know, on your Facebook page, with your friends, with your family member, because what's going to come next applies to each and every one of them. So getting a good night's sleep, that doesn't happen by chance. It's not some random act that we're going to go through. This is something that we have to intentionally set ourselves up for. Because if we're not using the right pillow, we're causing our body to be broken over time. And that's not okay. Because these are some of those really, really common issues. Now, let me tell you, in fact, I'm just going to go back one slide for just a second. Uh, maybe this is you fighting the battle in bed, not just with your pillow, but with friends and family. I go through this myself. Yeah, subluxations, they can happen at night. And sometimes it's our pillow, sometimes it's our bed mates. It does happen. But in the end, your body doesn't care. Because let me tell you, as many ways as you think that you can get a good night's sleep, there's a thousand different ways that you're capable of getting sidelined from being in the right position. And let me tell you, when we sleep, it's supposed to be in one of two positions either laying on your back or laying on your side. Now, in this picture, you're going to notice that, hey, listen, this very top line here, laying on your side, your spine is supposed to be nice and straight. Just like when we do a posture check with you standing up, well, your spine should be nice and straight. When it is, that's great because the nerves are able to conduct information freely and communicate the way they're supposed to. But when the spine is bent and twisted, well, there's going to be those subluxations, those bones that are out of place that, that put pressure on your nerves so the communication process can't work at 100%. When you're laying on your side and your spine is not nice and level the way it's supposed to, yes, you're going to experience that same interference. And no, it's not okay. 100% of that nerve conduction is supposed to go through Regardless of whether you're sleeping or awake, it doesn't matter. 
Now, some people still fall in on, on those old paradigms of, hey, listen, if I can't feel it, it's okay. If I'm not getting that pain, I'm healthy. Well, let me just tell you that doesn't hold true. Your body doesn't care whether you feel pain or not. All it knows is that if it's not communicating at 100%, the tissues it's attached to can't be working at 100%. And let's just imagine, it's the nerve that goes to your heart. It's the nerve that goes to your lungs. Those or organs aren't important. They're meaningless, right? Well, I would hope that you would disagree. They're all important. I don't care whether you're talking about your heart, your lungs, the muscle in your back, your stomach, your intestine. Whether you're sleeping or awake, they're constantly working. And therefore, that communication process is equally as important at any time. Because anything less than 100% is a state of disease. And listen, when you're laying on your side, if it's not right, it's wrong. So if it's not perfectly level, if your head is tilted up or if it's dropping down too much, guess what? It's wrong. It's sort of like going outside and getting ready to wash your car. And you turn that faucet on 100%, all the way on, in the water's coming out full blast. Now that hose, well, it's supposed to be able to con conduct and allow for that water to go through freely to come out the other end and do the job that it was created to do. Now, if you put your foot on the hose, you know, like two feet after it comes out of the faucet, well, what do you think? It might not come out the other end the way it's supposed to. Does it matter if you put a kink, you know, 10 feet down the hose? No, it's going to have the same effect. See, that interference, regardless of where it is, regardless of at what point it happens, is still going to produce the same negative effect, the system not working properly. In fact, oftentimes, you know, one of the very first things that happens is people wake up in the morning and, oh, my stiff neck, oh my they're stretching out, they're getting in the hot shower, they're loosening the muscles up. Listen, when you're sleeping, that doesn't mean just because your eyes are closed that muscles and tissues aren't working. If you walked around like this for eight hours, let's just try that. Just one day. Just walk around like this for eight hours. I think sooner or later you would notice your muscles fatiguing just a little bit. You know, whether it's tightening too much up on one side, whether it's getting stretched out so much on the other side that they're fatiguing. Sooner or later, this is, your body's going to talk to you, right? Well, if you're sleeping in this position six, seven, eight hours, guess what? Sooner or later, like when you think, when you open your eyes, your body is going to talk to you. So therefore, we have a choice. We have a choice of either correcting this problem which is the right pillow for your body, or having to deal with another problem. And that is the uncomfortableness that comes from the body not functioning the way it's supposed to. Now, let's talk about picking some pillows here. Um, the very first suggestion is really simple. You might want to talk to the spine specialist to sort of allow them to help guide and direct you what's going to be the best choice for you. Now let's think about this. Who is that person that's taken x-rays on you, looked inside, measured the curvatures, looked at how straight or not so straight that spine of yours is, who might that be? Well, I would say that's your chiropractor. And I don't care whether you're at the Limber Chiropractic Center or somebody else's chiropractic office. Listen, talk to your chiropractor. Uh, we're going to talk about some, a, lot, a lot of different pillow types here in just a minute. Let me tell you, there's a lot of different pillow types out there. There's this wonderful thing, it's called Google, okay? Go ahead, type in pillows, all right? Hit images. It's going to bring up thousands of pictures of different types of pillows. Everything, different colors, different shapes, different sizes. You've got different profiles to them. You need somebody who has knowledge of what your body actually requires 
in order to get you to the right place as quickly as possible. Listen, I love shopping for shoes. What's the very first thing that happens when you go into a shoe store? As the salesman is starting to help you, that salesperson as they're gonna help you, come on, let's step on this device so I could measure your foot, so I know the profile, so I know what I need to pull off the shelf for you. And once we figure out what that outside you know, look is supposed to be, well, we get to match you up with that perfect shoe for you. And that's exactly what your chiropractor is going to do. Take a very complex question and boil down the answer for you so that you can get on to that right thing. Because there's nothing worse than being frustrated by trying one pillow after the next, after the next. I mean, maybe you've done that. I've seen that. I've heard patients talk about it. I went to the store, I bought six pillows. I tried them out. None of them worked. They all felt horrible. It's like, well, that's a wonderful thing. I'm glad that you tried all those. Six down, only about 1,800 more to go. Good luck with this process, all right? Instead, it would be that best thing for you just simply to ask. Because in the end, considering the very first consideration is the sleeping position. Deciding whether you're a back sleeper or a side sleeper has a lot to do with it. Now, again, I'm gonna comment on this. If you're a stomach sleeper, stop now. Push pause, don't do it again, okay? Destroys the neck, destroys the, the curves in the mid back, puts more excess stress and pressure on your chest, your lungs, destroys your intestinal tract. The list just keeps going on and on. If you wanna have a continual life of spinal issues, continue sleeping on your stomach. Go for it. So in this conversation, we're gonna be focusing on your side sleeping or your back sleeping. So those two things are gonna be one of the very first questions that are oftentimes asked. Are you more a side sleeper? Are you more a back sleeper? Do you do a combination of the two of those? And that helps to actually narrow the field down tremendously. Because we could talk about, you know, water pillows. And I love these devices. Some people have a love-hate relationship if they don't fill them properly. If you fill this properly, the blessing is, is that you get to dial the pillow height in for your body. See, the purpose of the entire pillow when you're laying on your side is to span from the side of the shoulder to the side of your head. That's what it's for to keep everything nice and level. So the water pillow has a bladder, sort of like a balloon. You're able to fill the balloon, more water makes the pillow go hot, taller, which means that for individuals who have wider shoulders, we're able to fit them. Same thing with people like younger ladies who have more narrow shoulders, we get to fit them too. And in turn, literally, dial this in to be a perfect match for the height that you require. Now, water pillows are great. And I will tell you, you do need to fill them properly. We've been using them for probably about 15, 20 years now. They've just simply improved the technology. They've gotten better and better and they last for years as long as you take them, take care of them properly. This wave pillow, these are really great if you're a back sleeper. Now, not all wave pillows are the same. And in turn, you know, one of the things to recognize is when you look at wave pillows, they oftentimes come with two sides to them. Two waves, one on one side, one on the other. And these waves are at different heights. One is a little bit taller than the other. They do this to match up with different body profiles. Now, your first question was, well, listen, how could I tell which one of those profiles is better for me? Great question. I'm so glad that you asked that question. So there's this thing, it's called muscle testing. It tells us whether or not your body is being supported the way it's supposed to. And in turn, by testing those muscles, it allows us to better understand, is this doing the job it's supposed to do? 
Now, if you've ever been tested on inserts or orthotics, well, you've had that testing done. When the orthotic or the insert is working properly, the body is being balanced, there's less stress through the nervous system, that muscle test is nice and strong. When those devices start to fail, if they're not matching up properly, what ends up happening is that muscle test is weak. Well, same thing with your pillow. Laying on your back, that muscle test is just done in a different position, but it tells us exactly the same thing. If it's not supporting the curvature in your neck, helping to increase the curve, keeping that nice, great channel open the way it's supposed to, your system is going to be weaker. That curve, it's supposed to be 45 to 60 degrees. And those waves are supposed to help maintain that curvature where they're supposed to be. In fact, for many people who are reinstalling, rebuilding that curvature, it's a wonderful thing using these pillows because for five, six, eight hours a night, you get to be in that positive position, which sort of like a retainer, trains your body where it's supposed to be. Donut pillows, very much the same as a wave pillow. But one of the things that happens with the donut pillow is there is a deeper hole in the middle. So your head gets to sink into that thing. One of the things that this does is it helps to lock you in place so that you're less likely to be moving from side to side. And again, recognize donut pillows have different sizes. So therefore, we need to make sure that we're testing you so that you're utilizing the right side of the pillow when you're sleeping at night. Now, listen. There are so many benefits to picking the proper pillow. You know, reducing headaches, fewer headaches, reducing neck pain, increasing circulation, a better night's sleep. Um, let me tell you, this is the tip of the iceberg. That's us being so superficial. Because the last time I checked, if we're not sleeping properly, we are breaking that natural rhythm that our body is supposed to be having at night. Our body doesn't heal well. And in turn, we're setting ourselves up for future damages and less vitality. We all know our body is supposed to heal when we're sleeping. But if you're not getting that proper sleep, if you're not sleeping through the night, then guess what? Your body isn't capable of doing what it was created in time and designed to do at those hours, during those circumstances. No, you're not going to get that proper healing the way you're supposed to. So we could talk about everything as far as benefits are concerned, from, you know, reducing pain, helping the healing process, you know, to, you know, the circulation issues. But those are only superficial. Those are only the tip of the iceberg. Because we don't know how far reaching it is as your body is walking through that process. Now, I'm going to tell you, we've really kept this conversation quite simple tonight. See, picking pillows is, is one of those things. We can make it really complex. We could talk about all the, all the, you know, the different components, the different types of pillows, the different materials. But let's do the most important thing. Let's simply test the system and ask your body, is this doing the job it's supposed to do? To me, that is that most critical step that we can make in order to help ourselves understand what's the next most right thing for me to work on. Since I know that each and every one of us has to sleep, this information applies to each and every one of us. Everybody's got to lay their head down. And oh yeah, by the way, if you think it's okay not to sleep with a pillow, just shake your head. The answer is no, it's not. We need this device in order to set us up for success. And we want to hear from you about how you're setting yourself up for success. Like this video. Share it with your friends. I want you to leave me a comment on the type of pillow that you're presently using. I want to hear from you about how it is that you're setting yourself up for this great success. Now listen, 
if you're having difficulty getting that good night's sleep and you think that, hey, listen, your pillow might be one of those things that needs to be addressed. I want you to help me out. Help me help you. Yes, I know that's a Jerry Maguire thing. But you know what? It holds true in this situation. If you need to have your pillow checked, leave me a comment below. Let's make sure that you bring it into the office. We'll set aside a few extra moments just to simply walk through the process of slipping and checking your pillow to make sure that whatever it is, however old it is, whatever shape, whatever size, whatever color it is, it's doing what it's supposed to do for you. I'm Dr. Joseph Baker from the Limerick Chiropractic Center.